my hometown well, I feel an old familiar feeling In 1744 The French attacked the prosperous English fishing port of Canso in Nova Scotia, capturing the families and sending the soldiers to the fortress at Louisbourg. While the men were imprisoned there, they witnessed the mutiny under the commissary Francois Bigot and found weaknesses in their defenses. A prisoner exchange was arranged and they were sent to Boston. In retaliation, the New Englanders went back, laid siege, and captured the fort in 1745. I have been trying to find a list of Captain Heron's men from Canso, but so far no luck. Here we are in, in Louisburg in 1744, and this is the time where uh, the war has been declared, but nothing yet has happened as far as a uh, uh, facility in, in Louisburg, except that we did uh, uh, capture a few prisoners in Canso. So, so right now we are a very prospering col colony, and we we're, uh, we're uh, on the verge of war. So in 45, the uh, the English would would come here, like actually it's the New Englanders that come here and and attack this place. So in 1749, the the French went, the English went and found in Halifax when the French come back here, and then there was about eight years of peace. And from following that, uh, about 1755, uh, the Seven Year War was uh, starting to uh, to develop. Uh, Uh, it's, uh, it's actually of 1756, but 1755 started with the deportation of the Acadians, and it just kept on escalating and until 17, 1757. They did patrol and uh, intended to launch, launch an attack here in Louisburg. However, they didn't think the conditions were right, so they they, uh, they went back to the drawing boards and uh, in 1758 they assembled in Halifax, came here to Louisburg, and uh, this and that's when the uh, Uh, the attack, the, the same same idea was uh, was the siege, and we were at that time we had about 7,000 troops, we, uh, and they came in with uh, 27,000, like 14,000 land troops and 13,000 naval troops, and basically it was the same idea except uh, a little uh, a little stronger in the attack, and uh, so seven weeks after seven weeks of siege and. Uh, Uh, a couple battles of the naval, like we lost a few naval ships that were in the harbor, and then uh, we ended up uh, uh, abandoning again the place of after seven seven weeks. This is the Lewisburg victualling record for Warburton's 45th Regiment, with only one name listed in Captain James Cunningham's company, Private Peter Martin. It's dated from October 25th, 1759 to April 24th, 1760, exactly the time period I had been looking for, as this is when Peter's son John would have been conceived, which lends me to my theory of a marriage or wife from this area. In 1760, the 45th Regiment were here to completely demolish the fortress. It turns out that Captain James Cunningham was witness to several major events as the aide-de-camp to the infamously incompetent Lord Loudon in 1756 and desperate to sell his commission. After Loudon was basically fired from his position as supreme commander of all British forces in North America, Cunningham once again became an unhappy aide-de-camp to another inept leader, General Abercrombie. The 45th Regiment's grenadiers were with Cunningham and Wolfe on the Plains of Abraham. I stopped in Old Quebec City on my way to Nova Scotia, and as I stood on the plains of Abraham, I couldn't help but wonder if Peter was here. These are the steep cliffs the British regiments had to climb up before attacking on that fateful day. In 1752, Canada's first newspaper appeared in Halifax. That same year, our calendar was changed from Julian to Gregorian in all the colonies controlled by Great Britain except Scotland. Also in 1752, the not prepared town of Halifax had received 12 shiploads of German immigrants and a victualling list was created showing Peter Martin living with four females above the age of 16. I believe these women were part of the German group who had to be temporarily housed before being removed to the new town of Lunenburg. It's been a really exciting journey up here and uh, really touching for me. And I know for Alana, it's been very exciting. It's been incredible looking at some of the documents that led us here as well because those documents uh, were really critical. Some of the things that we looked at, such as the court records, uh, there were interesting parallels. Uh, we looked at court records in Halifax for Peter Martin and uh, it brought together, fleshed out a lot of his life. 
So it is very interesting to look at some of these other, not the, not the typical records you would think of when you're doing a genealogy in order to really uh, flesh out your work and provide the real story behind everything that you're doing. Warburton's 45th Regiment was either in Halifax, Quebec, or Louisbourg from 1746 to 1760, a period of 14 years. This would explain why there are no records of Peter Martin having children between 1749 when he received his first grant and 1761 with the birth of John. If the 250-year-old rumor of his being in a regiment of foot is true, he was too busy. I am still trying to access the Lewisburg records to look for evidence that might tie their Peter Martin to my Peter Martin and perhaps finally find his place of birth. I have searched the New England, Acadian, Mi'kmaq, Irish and English Peter Martins for many years, all of them leading me to my proverbial brick wall. One thing I have discovered is that nothing comes close to being in the actual locations of your research. It really brings the page alive. Until next time, I'm Alana Ryan. Thanks for watching.